Education takes up at least 12 years of a student's life. They go to school to follow a curriculum, sit through lectures, do assignments, and do what they're told. What if there was a way to modernize this system and give students more freedom? A way to allow students to do what they want and get credit for it? What if there was a place to explore personal interests and define who you are? Innovation Academy is a cross-curricular project-based learning experience for students where they get to connect um, their interests and passions or um, career uh, goals to class content that we have here at the school. Innovation Academy is a way for students to have more control over what they're learning and the way that they're going to learn it. Um, it's also an opportunity for kids to really take ownership of their projects and do something that they can sincerely feel is meaningful work that is not just something that's going to uh, get pinned on the refrigerator if they get an A plus on it and then go in the trash a few weeks later. This is work that, ha that leaves a lasting impression and uh, provides the students with real growth. My first approach of Innovation Academy, at first I was like, all right, I know what I'm doing, we're going to go in here, we're going to do it. And then there was, it's, it's like being put inside of open field and being like, all right, go explore. It's, it was just so vast and big. I was like, okay, now what? What do I do? And luckily the teachers were there to help me out and um, kind of push me in the right direction. But really, it's, it was a little, uh, a little intimidating, but uh, once I got a hang of it, it was pretty nice. Utter confusion. It's very confusing at first. Not not even when you get into the class, it's not confusing, but just hearing what other people said I think was really confusing because everybody's project is so different and everyone's experience with Innovation Academy is so different. Um, I thought it was definitely a little bit weird and strange because I've been used to such structured classes and being able to choose what I want to do and how I learn it was different. I had no idea how any of it worked, but it, it just seemed really cool. Like I wasn't even gonna do Innovation Academy for Innovation Academy. Elizabeth and I were just kind of like doing accelerated studies through it. And then we saw what everyone else was doing and we wanted in, so. Um, what sparked Innovation Academy for our group of teachers is that we saw how students really had a lack of motivation. And it was a lot of students who even had um, so much potential and were doing well enough in classes, but they didn't really care about the work that they were doing. My first impression of Innovation Academy is that I didn't really think that it was for me. I thought that traditional classroom learning was the best way for me to go about things because I like structure a lot, but Innovation Academy taught me how to structure my day for myself and how to learn like time management. Uh, I want students to be engaged in what they're learning. and. I got to the point where no matter how much I sold what I wanted kids to know, they were um, not as interested in it as what I believe they need to be. So we wanted to try to give them an opportunity where they could do exciting projects and do work that we were seeing kids able to do kind of more on the side or in activities that really they were learning so much through it and it felt like they should be getting some kind of a credit for what they're learning and the work that they're doing how can we bridge this relationship between students getting to be creative and learn outside of the classroom with the actual content courses that they're required um, for, for education? I believe everybody is a learner uh, from the day one. You're a learner, you wanna learn things, but you only wanna learn it if you really wanna know what it is and what it's about. And so me trying to force feed information to students became very dry for me. My children, are five and nine and they would come home talking about what they learned you know and if you ask a high school kid what they've learned they're they're not as excited to share that with you they're not as excited to learn in general um, unless they really want it and so my spark was to figure out what students wanted to learn what they wanted to do what made them unique and then put it back on them to figure out what they wanted to figure out and then be a facilitator of that journey you know and to help them get where they want to go um, and let them drive the learning process. Innovation Academy allows students to work on their projects freely with small features that are there to maintain structure. Students start out with their problem statement, which defines their project and the problem they are trying to solve. Each week, students meet with their assigned facilitator and set three goals. 
At the end of the week, they explain what they did to achieve these goals and add artifacts, which are pictures of their process. Other than that, students are given the freedom to dictate their time in class. Innovation Academy was created because uh, we were chosen to be one of Kansas's redesigned schools. We knew at the beginning that we had an idea of what kind of um, ending we wanted to have, and I think we were even floating around the name Innovation Academy before we did this. But we went through and looked at what are all sorts of different avenues uh, that we could take, different um, ways of getting the kids motivated and providing a different structure to school, um, and did eventually come back to Innovation Academy. The first spark of Innovation Academy was in 2017. It developed over meetings with the Kansas Department of Education and redesign teams. The original concept was finally finished in June 2018. The initial launch was in the following year. Innovation Academy's first students have since graduated, but their projects live on. It's been a little bit since Innovation Academy, so I'll try to remember as much as I can. Yeah, what year did you graduate? Was it last year? I just graduated yeah, this last year, 2020. So, what year did you start Innovation Academy? Yeah, so I started Innovation Academy, it was first offered my senior year, so um, that's when I started taking that. Um, I took it my first semester and second semester of my senior year. What did you know about it when you started? Um, so my class was actually kind of um, helped like create it. So, um, and kind of gave a lot of feedback. We were kind of like the guinea pigs. So we did not really know much about it as well as like um, kind of the teachers and the people involved didn't really know much about it. It really evolved as we went through it, but um, before we started, we did some, a couple workshops and it was really just based on like um, project-based learning and the, like the design thinking process. That's pretty much what we knew about it. And then everything from there was just kind of interpreted by us. And so what sparked Innovation Academy was that the district had decided that they wanted to go in a project-based learning way. They just didn't know what that looked like. So we used the design thinking process to try to um, come up with a program that would meet all of our goals as far as giving students a real world experiences, chances to fail, and also learning classroom content in both core and CTE pathways. So at Innovation Academy, you use this thing called the design thinking process. Uh, it's basically your way of navigating through your project. There's empathy, defining a problem statement, ideation, prototype test. The design thinking process is cyclical. So um, you start with empathize and you go into, you use that to try to really understand what the user's needs are. Then you define the problem from there. So in traditional projects, usually a problem is given to you or a topic is assigned to you and you forget that part where you really step back and you try to understand um, what the needs are and who, who needs the solutions to that because that can really def change what that problem statement looks like. After you define the problem, then you start ideating and brainstorming. You move on to creating prototypes and you try to um, get as much feedback and test those prototypes as possible so you can constantly revise and reflect and try to make that prototype better. But you can always be in many different places in the model at once. You don't have to just start with empathize. You can be testing and empathizing at the same time. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the first impression of the design thinking process was, ah, I don't need this, ah, I'll just do my project right now. It seemed a bit unnecessary. Yeah, I was like, uh, do we really have to do this? But it actually helped more than you would expect. Yeah, it definitely did. I mean, I was like, do I really have to go through all of these steps? Like, to get to the finished product, but it actually really does help when you are forced to go and talk to people to first, like understand the problem instead of just starting off with the problem itself. You use it whether you know what you're using it or not. Um, I think my first half of IA was, I'll figure this out on my own, I'll just do it. Um, and in figuring out my own, I instinctually did the design thinking process. I think it's helped me be able to understand my own project more instead of under, just understanding what I was doing surface level. Kind of forced us to slow down and not just go with our first idea. We had to think, th think it through a lot more. And then it just, I don't know, it really focuses you on certain aspects of things. I really love the design thinking process. It's 
actually similar to pretty much any other uh, design or problem solving process that uh, we use. It's very similar to the one that I use as an engineering teacher for Project Lead the Way. Um, but the best part about it, I think, is that empathy piece that comes at the very beginning um, because that's what I think really makes or breaks a project for every student is whether or not they have that clear empathy and the clear understanding of why they're doing the project that they're doing. If the kids have a reason for doing it, they're going to be motivated and it's going to keep them moving through the process. Uh, after learning the design thinking process, it kind of showed up in projects like recently, because I know it, it, in some people, they find themselves doing it accidentally. Like, they, yeah, for sure. Like once it kind of, we kind of broke it down and it was something that we had learned. It's definitely something that is just already implied and like naturally, like you said, um, especially like being on your own and being independent in college, you come across a lot of um, problems and issues that need to be solved. And that's when you just kind of mentally like go through those processes, whether it's for a class or just like anything in life. And I definitely see myself doing that a lot more without even thinking about it or maybe not even breaking down the steps, but it just comes like natural. It's a way to teach students about the, the journey of learning. Uh, and ultimately being okay with failing in that process because that's that's something that I think human beings struggle with um, and so I think the quicker a human can figure out that failing is part of that journey um, and part of finding the true answer the better. Well we look at Innovation Academy as our own design thinking process, our own IA project. Using the design thinking process to, to create the Innovation Academy was really where we found our answers um, as a staff as we were designing it. Um, I remember going to a meeting, a redesign meeting uh, with Mr. Furman. We went to Lawrence and we were sitting around tables, uh, districts in the state trying to figure out you know, how to redesign school, what was best for kids, where do we need to go from here. Uh, and we were using the design thinking process to do that. Uh, we were, we were def truly defining what the problems were and um, trying to ideate solution and em empathizing with students, like listening to, you know, where they were and what they were doing. And um, You know, we took a lot of student feedback as far as the scaffolding of how things should work, um, what the appropriate amount of workload should be, how much time we give to projects, how much time we should give to the design thinking model. You know, they are our market, they are our, our our customer and so what is it that they truly wanted out of education? We ideated solutions, we were prototyping things, we didn't have a chance to test them yet but we were doing what we were, um, what I believed the answer was. So like I said we did like a workshop the year before going into it because they kind of introduced like talked about it my junior year and they said that it would be offered my senior year. So we did a little workshop for everyone that was interested and then the first few days were more structured so we had um, opportunities to kind of like a kind of like some icebreakers for project-based learning and kind of like getting us familiar with like how things are we're gonna be so we had some like little games and like little projects before our big projects and that's basically how it was introduced to us. We went through and looked at what are all sorts of different avenues uh, that we could take different um, ways of getting the kids motivated and providing a different structure to school um, and did eventually come back to Innovation Academy. Yeah, we used the design thinking process to design, redesign Innovation Academy. Um, and I tell students that while they're in it, that, um, and it's encouraging for us too. We, we, are, we are vulnerable in our teaching methods and that we are using the design thinking process to teach students and we're modeling what we're asking them to do um, because it hasn't been perfect. There's been a lot of pieces that we've had to figure out and students are all different and it's kind of messy uh, but I think when students see us as teachers modeling what we're asking them to do um, it's really encouraging for them and also I think I've grown as an educator because I've let go of some of the outcomes and, and given power to students. Student projects consist of um, many different things. Uh, di <laughs> projects are different. So the student projects that I usually facilitate are more of the engineering side since I'm um, the engineering teacher here and so uh, a couple of really exciting projects that I've seen this year a student created an automated pet feeder 
Um, so instead of just an automated pet feeder that you usually see um, in the market for uh, cats or dogs, this uh, student wanted to create a scalable one that could actually be used for livestock. So my project, it started out with me not knowing what I wanted to do. There's a big old list of different problems you can solve and one of the problems on the list was being able to uh, feed animals when you're not home. And so I took on the project of feeding animals when you're not home and uh, created an automatic feeder where uh, a little Arduino would feed your animals when at a certain time throughout the day. I have Logan's original prototype is still sitting up there. He did a cardboard prototype first, um, which he learned so much just from doing the cardboard prototype because it was like, how does this mechanism actually function? And you know, even though it wasn't out of the material that he ultimately built it out of, he actually made a, um, a, a wooden a wooden box, and then uh, we 3D printed a custom wheel that would power the um, the whole mechanism. But just initially getting his hands on materials in general and trying to make a three-dimensional representation that actually functions of this project was, was where he did so much of his learning. My uh, first design for my feeder, um, it, the wheels or whatever didn't work the way that I thought they were on paper. And um, so I had to completely redesign the wheels and the little hopper chute for my feeder because it didn't work. And then uh, the Arduino was a lot of failure because I, I didn't know uh, how to do Arduino going into it, how to communicate to our Arduino. I uh, started out with pushing a button, but that button program does not work with the same program that um, is for having it going off at a certain time. The failure along the way of uh, learning that um, things aren't going to work out the first time, pretty much every time. Um, so you'll have to be have a take a moment to step back and learn from what you're doing. It was just amazing after probably two or three months of the year, we got to a point where I just couldn't teach him anything anymore. And so he's going on all of these online forums and researching how to do things and um, asking people on the web how to do a lot of the work that he was doing. And that was exactly the kind of thing that I felt uh, students needed to be able to do and that people need to be able to do is, is find their own methods for learning new information. Everything is out there, especially with the internet. So not doing something is really just you not taking the time to learn how to do it. Technology, I think technology has created a different way of learning in that everything you need to know and everything you want to know is available online um, through some capacity. So my job as an educator has become more of a facilitator of knowledge than an educator of knowledge. Um, I think we've gotten a lot of real world opportunities and real world knowledge that you don't get in a regular classroom mm -hmm. setting. We let students choose um, where they take their project and where they're to help guide them. Um, and also uh, just creating a portfolio to showcase their learning and their journey. But other than that, the prototypes look different, the product looks different, and the solutions to the problems look different. So when we have students start creating a project in Innovation Academy, um, we always, of course, start with empathy. Um, and oftentimes, students will not necessarily know what kind of a project they want to do. And so we do talk with them about uh, different ideas and you know try to kind of see what does stick with them. Um, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do in the start but I did know I wanted it to connect to my two content classes business essentials and graphic design and I knew what my interests were for the future so I was able to get some help from Ms. Bro to figure out what I wanted to do. And now that we've been doing this for a couple of years we're seeing the peers, the other students helping their their new their peers who are new to Innovation Academy go through that empathizing process and they say so what are your interests what do you want to do when you grow up what do you want to learn about um, what do you like to do in your free time um, and so then after having this peer conference students are able to discover a project or an idea or a problem um, and then focus on that and and do the defining and ideating 
uh, portion of it, but what is really critical is the prototype and test and doing that as soon as possible because you learn so much more from the actual prototype and test than you ever will from the ideating portion. Uh, finally, is the um, is the actual like project product phase. Um, honestly, it's a really fun experience when we get to see each other's projects. Uh, we'll actually all present at the end of the year and everyone gets to see um, the different kind of projects that we see. I had the idea for the project earlier in the year and then I kind of formed my Innovation Academy project in time around it. The project I chose was working with an inspiring entrepreneur to build her alternative therapies business. Um, she started to build her brand, um, Restore Harmony, and so it was really great to work with her. I chose this project because not only could I connect it to both my business class and my graphic design class, but it was also somewhere in the medical realm with alternative therapies being such a popular thing now um, that it was really cool to branch out and do something in my interest and get some real world connections in business. Um, I'm working with the city and logging some horticulture data for them um, for their civic campus project. I chose it because I thought it would be a fun way to get to learn more about the city and learn more about their engineering jobs. My project was uh, to first create an animation and then um, through miraculous circumstances I got to teach an animation class here at the high school. Um, and it really has, it's really made me appreciate my uh, my occupation, because I was really unsure if I wanted to do this or not. And Innovation Academy kind of gave me opportunity to actually explore it myself and really get into the nitty gritty of what's required of it, what kind of steps does it take, and um, it just kind of opened my mind a little more. My project consisted of bringing back the recycling program to the high school, and I got that passed. Um, it took me a long time though. I took about one semester actually creating the plan and then one semester with revising my presentation in order to make it more concise and uh, just a better presentation for the board. It was in person. Yeah, it was like in the middle of when they were talking about like what they're gonna do for like everybody coming back to school and then I was like, recycling. <laughs> I mean, I accomplished it, so. Our project is a small company that we have recently moved into the school um, and it focuses on creating items, specifically stickers and apparel that promote positivity. And we started it because it's been a pretty tough year all around and we wanted to bring a bright spot in people's day. Uh, did you know what project you wanted to do whenever you started? Um, I actually didn't know um, what project I would be doing. I had some ideas. Um, me and Adele Gore, who's now a senior, she, we wanted to do a project together. And so we were kind of stuck on like two kind of things. We either wanted to do something with um, like volunteer work and um, maybe work with like a nonprofit, or we wanted to go more like the business route and like kind of do either like make a business or kind of how some of the business classes like entrepreneurship but those were kind of our general ideas. And then it wasn't until later that our actual, my actual project was um, developed. I worked with Adele and our actual project was bringing um, unified sports to Baser, which is basically working with the Special Olympics in their high school program. And so like we compete against other schools. It's kind of like its own like team thing. So there's like bocce ball, basketball, and soccer. And so basically we are paired up with um, some students that have special needs and we go and just compete and have a lot of fun. I know that uh, Adele and Caitlin just competed in bocce ball and they won. So that's pretty cool that I can kind of see that continue on, so. Yeah, I was just gonna say that the other day or like a couple of weeks ago or something like that, they were yeah. having it like out in the CTE area. Yes. I definitely miss it a lot. It was a lot of fun kind of developing and it was, we didn't, with COVID and everything, like we didn't really, I didn't really get to see it fully develop. We did play bocce ball, but we didn't get to do soccer, but it's cool now that a year later, they're still able to do that. One of the greatest blocks in creating something new is the fear of failure. Facilitators in Innovation Academy urge students to not let that stop them. In fact, they encourage them to fail because ultimately failure is essential in the process of learning. I will say this now, if you're an IA, you will fail. Uh, that is, that will happen, everyone will fail. If you don't fail, then you're not trying. I have failed. <laughs> my, my first project was to create a whole 
three and a half minute animation, uh, I got a 30 second, not even animation, a storyboard out. Um, and it really made me realize how big a animation is. Or even with my second, um, my second project, which is teaching my class, when you start a project, uh, if you're new to IA, don't be afraid to change it. Um, IA is supposed to be your escape from school and escape from, I guess, conformity, you could say. Um, if you don't like your project, start it over. Even if you're halfway in into IA, you can still start a small project. Um, the point of IA at the end is to look at look back at what you did and see that you amounted to something and that you made something. Even if that small thing, you wanted to make a whole jewelry store and you made one ring, that's still something that you made. I was really anxious about starting that class. It was very rough for me to start, but when I actually got into it, I, I overplanned. actually. Um, I over-anticipated everything. Uh, I had no, no experience of being a teacher ever in my life. So it was a lot of trial and error, ask the kids, hey, does this work, does this not work? It's, the entire thing is trial and error. Um, and there will be error, there will be lots of error. <laughs> Um, I think we kind of fail a little bit all the time. <laughs> Not like big failures, but we make little mistakes. Like we'll print something um, wrong or we won't put the mirror on when we cut something. Um, so there's little moments like that all the time, but there's lots of grace. And mm -hmm. I think the teachers encourage you to fail and therefore it's not something scary. It's just something that you see as part of the process as much as succeeding is. So, yeah. I feel like I've had so many moments of failure like where I just have to completely abandon everything. Like our first ideas for a project before I landed on recycling, I had like five different ideas and like I started to go into them and started to figure out how to execute them. And then I would be like, oh, this isn't even possible. Like this is not going to work at all. Like I thought about um, fencing off the area where like the gate in the trash can was. And I was like, that's not going to work. There's cars there. It, yeah. So, and then I thought about doing like um, different lunch tray options for the lunch room or different like, instead of using plastic forks or styrofoam trays. And that failed once I started to look into like budget stuff. So, I don't know, I feel like there's too many. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have definitely. Um, there's been a couple times where I've tried to reach out to people that didn't work. Um, and maybe figuring out the next best step was definitely a little challenging. There were a lot of problems in trying to create Innovation Academy. A lot of it had to do with scheduling and having the staff to be able to support it. Uh, when you're supporting so many different um, long-term projects, it can be really overwhelming as, um, in, as an instructor or how we describe ourselves as facilitators. We've had to uh, first off, uh, make sure to carve out the time in our schedules, which has in some cases resulted in um, teaching a class within a class. Sometimes there's times when I have a class and then I have to also meet with uh, students I facilitate in Innovation Academy. Um, we've had to also reduce, in some cases, the classes that we are offering or at least rethink how we're going to offer them. Problems we faced when creating the Innovation Academy were mostly administrative. Um, you know, finding time for teachers to have time to collaborate, figuring out which students we would facilitate, communicating through issues that we might have with specific students because we're co-teaching. There's four teachers that are facilitating um, and trying to work together. I think co-teaching is a challenge because you're working with another professional who, you know, teaching is an art. It's not a science and so trying to figure out how another adult works and what their expectations are and their communication style. Not every single person on the staff really I think is fully, um, it, I wouldn't say that they're not fully on board or uh, they, they may just not fully comprehend um, how we're doing it and why we're doing it, um, which is okay. I think as time goes on people are, more people are starting to see uh, it be successful and see how we're continuously improving it, uh, which is, is good. We're continuing to get more positive feedback about that. And, and maybe I would also say that finding um, projects that matter for students can sometimes be a challenge if they don't know where they want to go with it. But most of the challenges we have were behind the, uh, behind the scenes administrative, figuring out the structure of how it was all going to fit together. 
Also, like just having students understand what this is is, is still a huge hurdle because, um, like. It, it depends on the student and their experience in it and what they're going to say to others. And it's scary to try to take something that you've never done before. So we're working on um, just, we want every student eventually to have some experience in this way of learning. I hope students get experience in finding things that they love and that they wanna pursue. Things that they don't like and don't wanna pursue can be just as important as well. So we hope that every student gets a chance to um, to try something out and steps away from this process, having more skills and more experiences to add to their resume and that's gonna make them more productive in society. What effects has Innovation Academy had on your life overall? Um, I would say, um, like earlier, I definitely like found that there's a lot of doors that can be opened and a lot of opportunities that I can go find myself for volunteering because that's something that'll always be important to me. So I definitely think that later on I will go back and um, try to volunteer or involve myself with a nonprofit um, and also like working with um, students with special needs. That was really important to me as well. So um, that played a big effect on my life. And also, like my sister, that was a big like thing for me. She has special needs, so bringing opportunities for her and also kids that um, go through high school and that may not have a lot of opportunities, um, presenting those. So that's something that was just really influential in my life. I hope more than anything that students get confidence out of their experience in IA. I want students to realize that ideas that they have in their head that they were like, man, I wish I could do that, that they actually can. What do I hope that students get out of Innovation Academy? Um, that's a really deep question, but I think ultimately that they would know themselves better. You know, I think high school is about figuring out who you are and what you're about, what your strengths and weaknesses are and what you're truly interested in, um, what you're good at and what you're not good at. And so I think that's sometimes hard to do when you're sitting in a classroom behind a desk listening to a lecture or, or going through some, you know, regimented, structured curriculum. You figure out if you know how to study or not. You know, you figure out if you're good at reading and how to interpret data and things like this. But as far as your interpersonal soft skills, you know, your ability to have confidence in who you are as a person and bring that out, I think ultimately that's, that's what I'm about in the Innovation Academy. And, and that comes from giving students the freedom to handle the unknown and to handle fear and handle failure, um, to own their successes. I think ultimately when a student comes through a project, every single time, even when a student struggles through a semester, when they share their project at the end of the semester, there's a true sense of pride in the product they've created because it's theirs. It's not someone else's. It's not something we told them to do. It's something they got to create on their own. Um, and they're always very proud of their journey. Innovation Academy is probably going to evolve to encompass um, underclassmen. And then we're also going to try to create another um, iteration of IA that will um, incorporate students who have been in this process a while, so it's more independent. So um, next year we see it evolving into having a freshman class where they get to learn English and social studies and some CTE courses all through one class um, and through guided projects. And then on the other end, having seniors who have been through IA before um, getting a lot more freedom, but also having ex more experts come into the building um, to help guide them. I would love to see more kids have the opportunity to be a part of it. Right now we're limited by how many faculty members are uh, currently involved and that's also limited by how many faculty members can fit a space in their schedules even to do Innovation Academy and how much it takes just to create a class uh, that can be taught through Innovation Academy or modify a class that can be taught through Innovation Academy. That takes a lot of work and we don't have the manpower or the hours at this point to do it for every single class. Uh, but we're slowly growing that way. Um, we're hoping to try a cohort with a group of freshmen next year um, that would hopefully be a part of Innovation Academy for all four years of high school. I definitely think there will be kids who are in this first year that will decide it's not for them 
and kids who are not in this cohort the first year who will want to join it later on in high school, which I think is an awesome opportunity. The more that you can learn about yourself and how you learn, the better, because uh, you're going to be continue learning for your whole life. I would also really like to see more students do uh, group projects. We have a lot of students who do just an individual project right now, and or some that maybe have like one partner that they're working with. Uh, but the best projects are able to take um, skills from different people and put them together. And I'd love to see our students be able to take advantage of working and collaborating with each other and uh, using more skills um, as, as a result into one project. Uh, my ultimate desire would be for all of the CTE department and a few core subjects to be a part of what we do. Um, I think it would be great for the entire CTE building to be the Innovation Academy where students are here all day long in their elective time and they are working with teachers on their own in a less structured environment and they have access to every teacher all at the same time. Most of the projects that are designed include graphic design or some sort of media and video or business, um, you know, some sort of hands-on industrial um, building engineering component. And so, um, you know, we're, there's a lot less sit and get and there's a lot more freedom to pursue different conversations and relationships as we build our projects with hands-on tools to computer, computer labs and, and tools. Um, where students are building and creating and kind of design their own days. Lastly, do you have any advice for people who are starting Innovation Academy? Um, I would say if you have an interest and you maybe think that you don't really connect with the, like the school system or how things are structured. And I found that it was really hard for me to apply myself in classes that I knew that I wouldn't carry with on my, for my major and things like that. So I would really dive deep in, in exploring your interests and that'll really help you like figure out a major, figure out if college is even for you. I definitely think that it's a great opportunity that, that students can take advantage of to really find what they wanna do with the rest of their lives. New IA students, I just want you to know that you are welcome to try anything that you can think of to solve your problems. Talk with your facilitators and talk with some of the other facilitators and maybe even your other teachers or people in your community that you know who could help you solve that problem. Um, and we're gonna help you, help you figure it out. We have the resources and it's just a matter of you asking and discovering that, yeah, maybe we do actually have something that can help you do what it is that you're thinking of. Be open and ready to learn more about yourself and also to push yourself a lot. Like, it's Innovation Academy is just so different than what we're used to, but I think it's an opportunity that every student should at least try out because I think it can really offer a lot of life skills that will help you later in life. I'd say to just jump right in and don't be scared of your project because it might seem huge and very hard to do, but even if you fail, I mean, that's the worst that could happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad will really come out of it. So just yeah. kind of get into it. Uh, the advice that I would have for Innovation Academy students would be to enjoy the, the journey that is learning um, and let go of perfection and having the answers and get comfortable with the unknown. Innovation Academy is still in its early stages and will continue to evolve as time goes by. It will grow to encompass more students and with that, more opportunities. Students are the future, and Innovation Academy gives them the freedom to explore, interact with, and build the world around them. Ultimately, it allows them to find their calling.